The first way a polymer gets strength is by cross-linking. I've just got a couple of notes up here for natural rubber later. Please remind me. Um, natural rubber, this is its structure. Once again, you do not need to know the structures for the exam, but know the properties. Notice, the common factor in all these cross-linking polymers is there's a reactive bond in the chain. That's natural rubber. There's synthetic rubber, styrene butadiene rubber. Here is an epoxy resin. Those carbon oxygen chains on the end, those carbon oxygen triangles on the end are incredibly reactive. This carbon carbon double bond is incredibly reactive. That carbon carbon double bond is incredibly reactive. What a guy called Goodyear discovered in the 1860s, yes, it's the same Goodyear that founded the tyre company, is that if you mix sulphur, it breaks that chain and it ties it into another one. Carbon, 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 and then everything's all tied together. That's natural rubber. That is the process of vulcanisation. Let me write it down. So vulcanisation of a rubber puts cross-links in. The more sulphur you add, the more rigid it is. It's more highly vulcanised is the term that's used. Synthetic rubber works the same. You add oxygen, you add sulphur, it breaks that double bond and it ties those chains together. That's the ties in your car. Epoxies, I'm just going to rub out these first two and go again. Just before I do, I started rubbing it out and then continued carbon, carbon, and I think up there there was a um, carbon double bond with the vulcanisation. I've got here, they add carbon black and ultraviolet stabilisers to tyres. As well as the sulphur and the oxygen attacking the um, double bonds, ultraviolet light breaks them down as well. So sunlight breaks down natural rubber, turns it into a sticky, gooey mess. Like that pencil eraser you found in your pencil case after 10 years, or the back of your drawer at home after 10 years. It's just a sticky, gooey mess due to oxidation. Carbon black is just exactly that. It's soot. They add that to tyres to stop the light from going into the natural rubber, or stop the light from going in and destroying the double bonds. It's an ultraviolet stabiliser, incredibly critical. That's why your tyres are black. Part two on cross-linking, epoxy. I've got this um, tube of simple epoxy I picked up at a um, local shop. And let me just take it out of the packet. You'll notice it comes in two parts that you break together and mix. But why I've got this here I'll just make sure it's in focus. There it is. It has two parts in it. Part A is the resin, part B is the amine hardener. I'm just checking that's exactly what it says, which it does. There you go, that's even better. So, amines are ammonia based. That's the epoxy structure. The reactive part of it is that carbon-carbon-oxygen triangle at the end. This is a standard bisphenol epoxy, a very common epoxy resin. The epoxy is that. That bond is called, or that chemical structure is an epoxy. So, when I add ammonia to it, it breaks that down and it basically forms little nitrogen chains. There might be another one here. Nitrogen, let's add another carbon, or let another um, resin chain there. Carbon, however it looks, I can't remember. You don't need to know it, but see how it's all cross-linked just at the end of those chains. That is epoxy cross-linking. The second way that polymers get their strength is mechanical interlocking at the atomic level. Let's have a look at how they work. I've drawn up the six standard polymer structures for the recyclable polymers up on the board. You don't need to remember them, but let's have a look at the properties. You do need to know the structure property relationships at a basic standard. This is number one. High strength, 
polyethylene terephthalate. If you're wearing a polar fleece like that, a polar fleece jumper is Dacron. This stuff gets recycled into that. Dacron is a fibre that is polyethylene terephthalate drink bottles. They are incredibly high strength. When I shake the bottle it doesn't explode in my face, I hope. This is polyethylene terephthalate. If I look down the bottom, you might see it in the screen. Maybe number one is the recycling code, just there. So, why does that get its strength? It's got these big circular or rings of um, carbon atoms sitting in the middle of the chain that act like a roadblock. If I've got two chains, I try and slide them past each other. Those big rings, benzene rings they're called, trap each other and lock the chains rigid, which gives it high tensile strength. So the fact that the chains can't slide easily gives polymer number one high tensile strength. Polystyrene, you've all seen the expanded white foam that comes in every box when you buy a new TV or you buy anything. That is polystyrene. This, this is polystyrene. It's a thermoplastic, but at room temperature, it is completely rigid, uh, completely rigid. As you can see, polystyrene has got those benzene rings, but they're hanging off the side. The reason why that plastic could not move past each other at room temperature is because those chains physically lock into each other and stop it from moving. Sorry, not the chains, the benzene rings physically lock into each other and stop it from moving. Polystyrene is a rigid thermoplastic at room temperature. When you heat it up, the chains can slide past each other. When you cool it down, it's rigid. That is your drinking cups. That is the um, cheap plastic tableware you get, disposable tableware. So, that's mechanical interlocking. Polypropylene is one of the most flexible plastics. Polypropylene, here it is here. Polypropylene is just long chains of carbon atoms with a carbon atom hanging off the side. Put the video in HD, you'll see the image clearly. So, this is a rope I bought probably 25 years ago, 30 years ago, that still exists today. It has got high flexural strength. Tic-tac lids are made out of polypropylene. Polyprop works very well for tic-tac lids, for ice cream lids, these cartons that need to flex without bending. If you drop it, you don't want it to bend. It is food safe because it doesn't contain any chlorine or any toxins, so they use it in Chinese containers. It's got reasonable high temperature strength when you put it in the microwave but it has got flexural strength. Polypropylene is the polymer with flexural strength. I've got here PVC. This is PVC, the electrical cables, or the electrical conduits, are unplasticized PVC. What actually happens? It's like polypropylene, but it's got chlorine hanging off the side of it, which is a bigger atom that locks it harder. So while the rope remains flexible, that is locked hard. I'm not going to take this cover off and bend it, because it will snap. Unplasticized polyvinyl chloride is recycling code 3. Plasticized polyvinyl chloride, there you go. Hopefully it shows clearly in the video, recycling code 3, that is polyvinyl chloride. Not the world's best choice for food containers because the chlorine leaches into food. That is polyvinyl chloride, recycling code 3, if it shows. There it is in the reflection. So. 
Recycling code three is unplasticized polyvinyl chloride. Plasticized polyvinyl chloride, they actually put another chemical in that just sits between the change and just separates it a little bit. This is your vinyl raincoat you had when you were a kid. The flexible raincoats, the dashboard in a car, the upholstery in a car, unless it's an expensive one and it's leather, is vinyl, plasticised polyvinyl chloride. The, the plasticizer gives it flexibility. In a car, the vinyl is flexible. Over time, however, because car, cars get hot when they're sitting in the sun, the plasticizer evaporates. When the plasticizer evaporates, the what was flexible turns brittle. So that's the function of a plasticizer. That's polyvinyl chloride. The third way that polymers get strength is chain flexibility. This is polyethylene. Polyethylene is just carbon chains with hydrogen hanging off the side. I haven't drawn it. So, I've just drawn it up as chains because it exists in two forms. This, this milk bottle is high density polyethylene. You can't really see too clearly through it because the chains are aligned in what's called polymer crystallinity. So when the chains are aligned and they've got some structure, it's a crystal in polymer. The fact the chains are all aligned means you can't stretch it very far anymore and it gives it some tensile strength. That is high density polyethylene. Low density polyethylene, this glad wrap. The structure of low density poly polyethylene is it has side branches off it. The side branches mean that it's incredibly, incredibly flexible. If I pull it, you know you if you pull on glad wrap, do this at home, you can physically see it turning white where all the chains start to align. It's not the world's best at it, but it is possible. The final way polymers get their strength is just by chain alignment. Let's look at two classic examples, carbon fibre and nylon. Let's look at nylon first. Nylon is just long chains of carbon fibre, long chains of carbon, a little bit of nitrogen in it. But they just are incredibly long, incredibly obviously linear, and covalent bonds are strong. Nylon is strong because covalent bonds are strong. And when you stretch nylon, you line up all those covalent bonds with the tensile direction and you get strength. What's even stronger than ni nylon is carbon fiber. Let's get this, it's polyacrylonitrile. Doesn't matter once again. But we get this polymer that's straight chain. And we heat it up in a furnace, but only with a little bit of oxygen. So just enough so the hydrogen only burns off that. And it leaves the carbon behind. The nitrogen burns off it. The hydrogen burns off it. The carbon doesn't because there's not enough oxygen in the furnace. So we pull the, um, we make a fibre out of a polymer. And then we feed it into a furnace with a limited amount of oxygen. Hot enough to burn the hydrogen. Hot enough to burn the nitrogen but not hot enough or not enough oxygen to burn the carbon. A really fine juggling act, but what comes out the end is just straight carbon fibre. No hydrogen left on it, no nitrogen left on the chain, just a straight chain of carbon fibre that is bound covalently. So when you pull it, you have incredibly high tensile strength because the carbon is now aligned linearly as well. So now you have got an incredibly strong, covalently bonded carbon chain that's flexible. What we do in aircraft is you get the carbon fibre, you mix it with epoxy resin, which gives it the rigidity and the impact resistance. You get tensile strength and compressive strength. That's why the composites are used in modern aircraft.